Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. And in this video, I am teaching you how to fold the Boomerang One designed by world record holder, John Collins. Now this was part of a collaboration I did with John where we took eight of John's very best paper airplane designs. We're talking planes that boomerang back to you like this one, a plane that flaps as it flies, a tube plane that doesn't look like it should fly at all, but flies brilliantly, the world record plane herself, Suzanne, which flies up to 226 feet, and then several more beautiful paper airplanes. And I designed illustrated templates for those planes so that when you fold them, they can look like this rather than just a plain white sheet of paper. So if that interests you at all, head over to foldableflight.com or the paperairplaneguy.com to purchase your copies each package will come with three templates for each of those eight planes. So I'm also going to leave a card really quickly in the top right corner to check out John's channel because he has some awesome paper airplane content here on YouTube as well. Now, something I would like to mention is that uh, so far we haven't been selling this product internationally. And I would like to say if you are uh, someone who exists outside of the United States and you are interested in purchasing this product, please message me at facebook.com slash foldable flight because I would like to try and work out the details for you. The problem is figuring out the shipping costs for every place in the world and uh, kind of listing that on the website. But if you do message me personally, I am happy to try and figure that out and kind of relay to you what it will cost to ship to your location. So again, if you are interested in purchasing the world record fold and fly planes, you can get them uh, domestically on the paperairplaneguy.com or foldableflight.com. But if you are international, please message me because uh, hopefully we can work something out for you. And without any further ado, I am going to show you guys how this plane flies and then I will pass it over to John to teach you how to fold it. This is the boomerang plane. It's a great stunt plane. Circles right, circles left, does loops. Wow. A really uh, great plane to fly. As you can tell, it looks great too. We're going to start with this piece of paper. It says the boomerang one on it. And you'll want to flip it over so this edge is up. And the first move is to fold it in half uh, the short way. So we're just going to zoom in just a little bit here. And now I'm going to flip this over. Actually, you could use this edge if you want to. I'm going to flip it this way so you can just see which end we're talking about here. This corner right here up to here, if you just use that. Now, another way to generate this, if you're not using this great paper, is to find the one quarter mark. And you can find that by just folding that creased edge in half right there. Just make a pinch and then bring this corner over to that pinch and make another pinch. And you'll see that it comes out right here where this corner is. And if you're using this great paper that's already pre-marked, you're just folding from this pinch up to this corner right here. So let's go ahead and make that crease. And we're just creating a loop of paper here and we're gonna, um, we're gonna do the next move here is a squash fold. We're gonna open this loop up and and the squash is bringing this creased corner or edge down to the center here. And we'll just line that up and we squash that all flat. And one trick you can do is to just move this creased edge just a tiny bit in front of this edge right here. And if you do that, when you bring this over, everything lines up a little easier for you. So what I've done is I've just taken the, the other side of the squash fold. If you flip it over like this, you can squash it or fold it back that way. So you've got one half of the squash on one side, one half on the other. And now what we're going to do is one at a time, we're going to take these corners and the squash fold has created pockets here. And one at a time, we're going to put 
these corners from here into these pockets here. Of course, if you move it down, you can see that it's just too wide to go in that pocket. So uh, let's get it in roughly the right position first. Move this corner just so that it's just short of the bottom of that pocket right there. And we'll make a crease. Flip it over and crease the other side the same way. So we're starting here and moving this guy down to the bottom of the pocket, just like that. You can kind of use the uh, the other side of the plane as kind of a gauge. You're just going to make the crease in the same spot and break that back so that it lines up in roughly the same way for this, this corner to come out correctly here. And now what the next step is, is to narrow this corner so that it can go inside the pocket. And how do we do that? So again, here's the edge of the pocket and look how much more paper is sticking out here. So if, if we lift this up in such a way that we can see that half of the squash fold there. And what we're gonna do is just pull over that layer of paper until it's just inside the edge of that squashed pocket there. And we're gonna make a, a crease that goes from this corner that's now pointed down here. We're gonna make a crease that goes from that corner up so that that crease is just to the inside. Let me just push in a little bit more here. So that, that crease is just to the inside of the edge of the pocket. Let's check focus here so that you can kind of see. Here's the edge of the pocket. Here's the edge. And so now, now that we've got it so that it'll fit in there, let's go ahead and just put it in there. So hold it together, that crease that you made. And this, this edge is going to be bubbling up. Don't worry about all that. Let's just take this corner now, open up the pocket, and we're just going to put it right in there. So it was outside of the pocket. We narrowed it, and then we're putting it inside that pocket. And we're going to squash this whole thing flat. It's still bubbling up here to a large degree. That's kind of weird looking. And what we're going to do is move this down so that this corner touches that center crease. That's one landmark. And the front of the pocket is the other limit here. So we're squashing this flat so that this corner comes down just to the center crease and the front of the pocket is the other limit. So hold it all as it's going flat like that. And then we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing for the other side. Here we go. There's our uh, corner that's too big to go in the pocket. We're moving the layer over so that it's just to the inside of the pocket now. Make a crease and now we're gonna open up the pocket and fit that corner in there. Just like that. And again, using the front of the pocket and the center crease as the limits here. We want this corner to end up right, touching the center. We want the front of the pocket to be the other limit there. Hold that down as you make the crease. All right. It gets a little easier from here on out. There's one more really kind of crazy move, but from here on out, it's not that tough. So now let's lift up this corner here. We're going to fold it up. And the front of the pocket again and the rear of the plane are where the limits are. I kind of fudged just a little bit so these layers would come together just a little bit nicer. I'm just a tiny bit off on that corner. You could work it that way or not. Now we're going to make this side match. So I've I folded that corner up, flipping it over, folding the other corner up. Again, I'm just playing a little game here so that this, this looks a little bit nicer. And just a tiny bit off on that corner. So when you do it for real, you know, if you're using unmarked paper, um, or you can completely ignore that if you don't want the aesthetic part, you want the flight part to be better. Now, the next step is a little tricky. We're going to do a squash fold on the body of this whole thing. So I'm just lifting this up and I'm going to press against this nose part here. I'm going to lift this up and I'm opening the whole thing up and just pressing the nose flat. So let me leave it oriented kind of in a way where you can understand what's going on. Here's that center crease, lifting it up and pressing 
this side in. Now, the tricky part here is make sure that these two corners line up very closely with the center crease. Keep all that stuff lined up. I'm going to turn it here just a little bit so I can see better. And I'm keeping the corners right on the center and then just squashing out like that. Now, you'll notice a little bubbling here. This is one of the few airplanes it's okay to do a sweep at this point in the plane. Now, a sweep is just where you force that bubble flat by squashing a layer out. Usually that's a bad idea in paper airplane making. It ends up um, giving you some real asymmetry there. But on this particular plane, it's a good thing to just make a sweep of both of those edges. Okay, so now we've done our sweep. Let's flip it over and we're going to make a crease that goes from this edge to this edge. This is going to be the nose of the plane, and we're just going to fold that back from that corner and that corner. Make sure that the nose lines up with the center crease, just like that. Now you can see how those wings are lining up nicely. That's pretty fun. Now we're going to make a crease that goes right down here. We're just going to follow this crease right here, fold the plane in half. Looking good. And now to make the wing crease, the main wing crease is just going to take a little tiny bite off of this triangle right here. So leave this folded. We're going to fold this down. And we're just taking a little tiny bite off of that triangle. And you'll see that I'm, I'm holding this guy down so that this is going to be parallel with this center crease, the wing crease is. And I'm just taking a little nib off of this triangle right here. And it's going to be, it's about the width of your thumb if you got a thumb that's 22 millimeters or so. Let's flip it over and do the other wing. Just make the other wing match. There we go. And we've got these really handy marks right here where you're going to put winglets. Now you'll see that the winglet is raked in as such a way that it adds a little bit of up elevator. If you don't want that, you can make it really parallel to this main center crease. Moving a little bit closer. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of follow that this time. So you can kind of see what that looks like if you follow it. Flip it over. Follow it on the other side. Now this will um, probably boomerang pretty reliably without even adding any up elevator if you follow that the color band there, right there. And that's kind of neat. It, it makes those winglets really kind of stand out. There's one, there's the other. The other thing you're going to need to do here uh, for every uh, good boomerang plane is you're going to need to add some curve right here. And you can see I'm just kind of massaging that in by pinching that all those layers together and rolling my thumb across the bottom of the wing there. And that's going to add just enough uh, curve at the front so those layers will stay together nicely. And I would give that you know a couple of practice throws before you commit to adding a bunch of up elevator. Up elevator here, you can make it circle tighter by adding more up elevator here. You could add just a touch. And here's a good, kind of a good amount to start with. You don't need to start with a lot. Just, just that much of a little bend right there should be sufficient for a test fly. And, and honestly, I would give it a test fly before you even do that. Uh, I'm just doing it to show you how much you would, you would put in if it's not doing the kind of circle that you want. And you're going to throw it leaned over at not quite a 90 degree angle, more kind of halfway, more like 45 degrees. Give it a throw and leaned over. It should stay leaned over because of this negative dihedral angle here. The wings are drooping a bit in flight and that makes the plane not self-correct. So it stays leaned over and because of the up elevator, it's going to circle back. It'll circle back left. It'll circle back right. And of course, it'll do a loop.